Well, hello there. Today we're going to work on making some gears function. We're going to do a small series on the three different types of gears in uh, Inventor. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at a spur gear and make it function and uh, look at some of the advantages of using uh, the built-in gears in Inventor. Uh, as always, make sure you subscribe to the channel to watch more videos like this in any CAD format. And if you have an idea that you would like to see demonstrated, please leave that in the comments for us and we'll get on making a video for that. All right, so today we're going to start off by creating a new assembly file. And the first thing that we have to do in the assembly file is save it. So I'm going to make a folder and I'm going to call it my spur gear. And then I'm going to give this assembly a name of something temporary, like temporary spur gear assembly. Okay. From there, we're going to switch over to the design tab at the top. And over in the middle, we're going to move to spur gear. There's a lot to that we can do in here. We can change the number of teeth, the gear ratio, uh, thickness, and all of that. But for today's purposes, our main function is just to be able to take a gear set and make it function and work how we would anticipate it to. So we'll go ahead and use the defaults and we'll just click OK. It wants to make some files, and that's fine. And we'll go ahead and place it in here. OK, so there is our gear set. Now what I like to do at this point is we're going to do a save to save all the initial files. Is I like to go ahead and make a new assembly or assembly that needs the gears already, these are just my a placeholder set for it. So in today's example, we'll just go ahead and make a clean assembly. And we're going to place in that assembly the two gear files from the previous assembly. All right, so in the folder that we just saved, there's the assembly. But if I come into the subfolder that Inventor made for me and then Design Accelerator, I'm going to find the subset here. I want to grab the two gears by themselves and bring them on in. OK, so now I have my two gear files and a brand new assembly. So at this point, I'm going to save off this assembly in that same folder, and I'll call it final spur here. Now, the great thing about these is they're basically just blanks. We could edit these files individually, uh, spur gear 1-1, spur gear 2-2. We could add holes, other features in here uh, very quickly and easily. Okay, so really it comes down to getting these locked down and taking care of their uh, degrees of freedom so that they'll roll and function like we would anticipate them to work. We'll go ahead and look at the origin planes, and I'm going to need a couple of them. So we'll start with the YZ and the y or the xy and we'll make those visible and then i need some kind of axis and we'll go with the z axis here okay so the first step is to constrain the face of the gear 
see the plane. I have predicted offset on, so let's get that off. Okay. And then we are going to take the gear file and open it. And now we can see where that gear file is at. Just to show you how easy it is to make changes to this, I'm going to just create a sketch on here. And we'll draw a circle in here as an axis. And I'm not even going to worry about dimension. Now let's extrude that through. All right, there we are. So we could add as many features and make changes as long as we keep the teeth the way they are. The last thing I want to do while I'm over here is I want to come over here to the surface bodies and I want to take this pitch diameter and I want to make it visible. Okay, back to the assembly and I'm going to open up this other gear and do the same thing with the pitch diameter. Okay, that pitch diameter is extremely important to make this work. So remember we have an axis, the z-axis, so I'm going to constrain the z-axis with the pitch diameter on the big gear. That should take care of all of its degrees of freedom, and I can test that where it will spin freely, and that's its only DOF is rotation. So that leaves us our second gear to worry about, which is a smaller one. Right now it has all of its degrees of freedom available. I'm going to take the origin on that gear, which should be the Z, and I'm going to constrain the Z axis of the small gear to this center plane. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is do a face to the back face so that they're in line with each other. All right. That takes care of our most of our major constraints. We have them in line. This one's going to move up and down now. So I'm going to kind of place it right around here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a constraint tangentially between the two pitch diameters. Okay. I'm going to temporarily ground this guy so he won't move. And then I can rotate this guy a little bit so that he's engaged with the right place. We'll unground this, and now everything is free to move. We should have a DOF of rotation on this gear and a DOF rotation on this gear. I'm going to take these planes and axis and turn the visibility of those off. So now we can just see our gears. And we have a couple last things to do to make this work. I'm going to come back to my constraints. I'm going to switch over to motion right here. And I'm going to pick my pitch diameter to my pitch diameter. It changes my ratio, and that's good. And I'll click OK. And now when I spin this gear, this gear will spin. So let's automate that process. I'm going to take this plane in our assembly to either the YZ or the XZ. We're going to do a constraint 
angularly solution one. I'm going to have predict offset on on this and to this one right here. And then we'll click OK. All right, that will be our driver for this. So I'm going to pick that last one that I made. which is the angle. We'll hit drive on it. And I'll set it to control C, control V, plus 360. Hit the down arrows and add drive adaptability. Start and start, we'll make that go twice. And we'll do it a step for each degree and go ahead and run it. And there we have our functional gears. Could it be easier for us? Okay, last thing I'm going to do is come back to my individual part files and turn the visibility of the pitches off. And we can save off our gear assembly final, and we have ourselves a functional gear set. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, please subscribe to the channel. Check out more videos like this, and uh, leave a comment if you have some video ideas as well. Thank you.